In this day and age, when we live by our watches, it is refreshing to know that there are some of us who have no notion of time and whose lives revolve around the timeless cycles of nature. They are the Agtas, a Negrito tribe living in the primeval jungles of northeastern Sierra Madre. In their forest world, the Agtas cling to a way of life that is gentle and in complete harmony with their environment, a way of life which we have largely forgotten. Deep in the heart of the Sierra Madre Mountains, in northeastern Luzon, lie the forests of Palanan Isabela. Palanan's vast wilderness is unique. It is probably the last intact ecosystem in the country, where old and rare stands of virgin dipterocarp forests grow on steep mountain terrain all the way down to the edge of white beaches facing the Pacific Ocean. These forests nurture a distinct range of living species found nowhere else in the world. This rich concentration of life and its relative inaccessibility has made Palanan an ideal haven for a unique race of tribal Filipinos known as the Agtas. The Agta is one of the remaining uh, hunter-gatherer societies in the world comparable to the Kung of South Africa, to the Punan of Borneo, to the Copper Eskimos of North America. Professor Nestor Castro is an anthropologist from the University of the Philippines. Among the colorful tribal folk of the Philippines, the Agtas have a special meaning to him because of their very ancient lineage, a lineage which traces its roots to the dawn of Filipino prehistory. The Agtas have managed to survive in this area for thousands of years now. The Agtas are virtually living historical relics. They have traveled through time, almost unchanged, from an age when the Philippines was still a part of an interconnected Asian landmass 12,000 years ago. Those hardy feet that crossed land bridges from Borneo to Luzon still tread the forest paths of the Sierra Madres today. There are various ethno-linguistic groups here in the, the northern Sierra Madre. We have the Ibanags, Ilocanos, Visayans, Tagalogs. But all of these are migrants to the area, having been, been attracted to the area only during the logging boom of the 1950s and 60s. What we would really consider as indigenous to the area would be the Agta. Uh, uh, they are also called the Dumagat, mainly by the lowlanders. One estimate puts them at uh, 700 for the entire northern Sierra Madre, while a bigger estimate would be 3,000. They live in very small pockets. Uh, one band, or Pukto according to their uh, uh, term, would, would uh, account for one family up to five families at most. This Pukto of Agtas lives at the foothills of Mount Cresta, Palanan's loftiest peak. The group of seven men, six women, and 13 children forms a small seaside community that sprouts on the fringes of Divilican Bay during summer months. Their movements follow the availability of crabs and spiny lobsters called banagan, which the men harvest and sell to nearby towns. They're highly nomadic and uh, their uh, lifestyle is highly egalitarian. They do not have any formal leaders. Uh, what would appear as their uh, leader, quote-unquote, would be uh, the eldest person because of his uh, uh, knowledge about the environment, of how to hunt, for example, how to fish, how to cure. So this would be the qualities of a leader. Akeg is one of the quiet leaders of the group. His shy, reluctant nature masks his considerable fishing skills, which provide a source of income for his band. While the men dive for lobsters, the women wade in the shallow and thick sea grass beds to collect sea cucumbers. When smoked and sorted, they are sold by middlemen to Chinese merchants who value their aphrodisiac properties. 
The abundance of wildlife resources in the nearby seas and forests and the ready market of buyers have lured a keg's ban to nearby population centers. The frequent cross-cultural exchanges have had a significant impact on their lives, some for the better, but mostly for the worse. Another problem would be the rapid culture changed. Before, they were subsistence hunters and gatherers, but because of the demand in the market, mainly by lowland groups, what has been transformed is now from subsistence hunting into commercial hunting. Anthropologists fear that exposure to modern civilization has done much damage to the Agdas. It has disrupted the fragile cultural patterns they have developed through thousands of years. Cultural patterns that have made it possible for them to survive life in the forest. This irreversible loss of knowledge is an ongoing tragedy. The Agdas, because they're one of the remaining hunters and gatherers as we know, is a repository of indigenous knowledge. In the past, biodiversity conservation efforts are mainly geared towards preserving flora and fauna, as if the forests, the seas, is only composed of trees, plants, and animals, and there are no peoples of the forests. But right now, we're trying to correct this situation by recognizing their role in biodiversity conservation. Perhaps one of the most endangered species in Palanan's forest are its original settlers, the Agtas themselves. Trusting and naturally friendly, they are easy victims to unscrupulous lowlanders who drive them from ancestral homes and lands by force or by crooked means of persuasion. Apundote is an Agda of the old school of tradition. He has somehow remained aloof and isolated from the corrosive influences of progress. His pride and ignorance, though, have cost him dearly. They are experiencing a lot of uh, discrimination and oppression by lowland migrants. They have been um, tricked into selling their land in exchange for a bottle of gin. Uh, one problem lies on differences in the uh, concept of land. The Agtas uh, have a communal concept of land ownership. While uh, they move from place to place, they still believe that the piece of land owns to the uh, ancestral domain, is part of the ancestral domain. But for the lowlanders, once the Agtas have moved forward, they have already abandoned their land. Without a place to call home in his old age, Apundote is forced to move on. A dispossessed soul in the land owned by his forefathers. Despite the many daily difficulties of a life perpetually on the move, he remains calm and stoic. He turns to Mother Nature for his needs, and for that, he is a well-adapted survivor. Apundote showed us a glimpse of his survival skills on a simulated boar catching session. Using only a knife and a nylon line, he readily finds materials around him to improvise a trap that's deceptively simple but lethally effective. <laughs> The inborn hunting skills of the Agdas is equally deadly in the waters as well, and is not exclusive to the men. The women are as talented in searching for game and finding it fast. 
A foray into Palanan's prolific barrier reefs leads Bita, Apungdote's companion, to a small, inconspicuous crevice. Using only sharpened bamboo slivers, she pokes and probes, and a few minutes later, struggles with a surprising catch. But the actress's depth of experience goes beyond their mastery of survival skills. Their vast knowledge of the healing arts and their familiarity with medicinal plants are an untapped resource that could lead to yet more wonder drugs waiting to be discovered. <laughs> They still recognize a lot of species in the forests that can be used for uh, uh, traditional medicine. But after having survived several millennia of existence, the Agtas of Palanan are coming to an evolutionary dead end. The forests that have nurtured them are going down at an alarming rate, every fallen tree symbolizing their diminishing chances for survival. Ultimately, the death of their culture is mankind's loss. I think uh, as long as we continue to protect the forests, as long as uh, no roads will be built into Agda territories, they will still survive and manage their own protected areas. Magpagtalo, magpagawan, kami lumayo doon.